Hello everybody. I recently started uploading my Halo gameplay to YouTube, where I play with a mouse and a controller at the same time, using the Xim Apex adapter. Since then I have often been asked, what are my Xim settings? How does it work to pull with a mouse controller combination? And why did I choose not to play with a keyboard? Therefore I would like to answer these questions and also show you with a camera how I play with a mouse controller combination and explain the advantages you gain with this setup. I will show you my Xim settings and the settings for mouse first. By the way, I'm using Logitech G502. What you need to be aware of first is um, that you have to set the same hertz in both the Xim app and for your mouse. I recommend using a thousand hertz because it makes the input lag the lowest. With 1000 Hz, you have 1 millisecond input lag. Next, I have activated expert mode. This allows me <coughs> to put my dead zones at zero. I'm not sure if that's ideal, but in my opinion it is good to have dead zones at zero, as it will give you the fastest responses. If dead zones are needed, I would configure that in-game. Otherwise, there is nothing else to consider in the Xim. In the settings for the mouse, you should also pay attention the DPI should be between 3000 and 4000. That's the spot where the Xim can work best. I have a plastic mouse pad as a base, which is why I use 4000 DPI. Here you can see my key assignments. I'm still using the left side of my controller and play Bumper Jumper. The Xim labeled these actions uh, with default settings in Halo. For example, left trigger is called aim down side or zoom because with default settings in Halo 5 you zoom with left trigger. But with Bumper Jumper, the settings that I use in Halo, left trigger is throwing grenades. Of course I will show you every button while I play. So all these J's mean that I use this button with my controller. So left trigger is throwing grenades, left stick is moving or crouching, and left bumper is jumping. I sprint and stabilize with A, and I thrust with X. I have four pedals on the back of my controller, so I can use A, and X with my left hand, even though they are on the right side of the controller as face buttons. I also left pause and guide button on the controller. All the remaining actions are on my mouse. As sensitivity, I have set 15 for Halo 5 and 20 for Halo 3, but I will show you later how I chose these settings. We are now in Halo 5 and you can see how I hold my mouse and the controller. Normally I put the controller on my legs and have it under my desk. As I said, I move with the left analog stick and crouch when I press it. I jump with left bumper and throw grenades with left trigger. These are the four pedals on the back of my controller. I, lose, uh, I use the two on the left or thrusting and sprinting. I have the pedals cut short so um, they're like buttons with a firm pressure point and this prevents unintentional clicking. And <coughs> this is how I use the mouse. I shoot with the left, uh, left click and I zoom with right click. The side buttons are dashboard, reload, switching weapons, melee, and switching grenades.
<coughs> now let me show you how you can find your right sensitivity. There is a total of three sensitivities and two of them are basically always the same and the one will rise. The three sensitivities are DPI, XIM sensitivity and in-game sensitivity. The DPI should always be in between 3000 and 4000 because that's how the XIM can work best. The in-game sensitivity should be as high as possible and the in-game acceleration should be as low as possible. The XIM sensitivity results depending on the game and the mouse pad. I have said it that the move that a move um, that a move of the mouse from the middle of the mouse pad to the edge is a bit more than 180 degree. So I want to make a 180 degree movement, a 180 degree turn without slipping from the mouse pad. And this would be a XIM sensitivity of 15 for Halo 3, uh, uh, for Halo 5 and 20 for Halo 3. When it comes to dead zones, you should set them as low as possible. The lower the dead zones, the faster the response, but sometimes you need dead zones because the aimer can move by itself. This is not the case in Halo 5, so I've set them on zero. And um, in Halo 3, however, my radial dead zones are 4 and my axial dead zone is 0. Now let me explain why I decided to play over control and mouse combination and mention the benefits. The biggest advantage, of course, is the precision of the mouse. Even if you cannot compare that with a PC experience, the advantage over an analog stick is huge. Furthermore, with the setup, it is possible to press any button without taking the thumb off the analog stick. If you play with a controller without pedals and do not claw, you always have to put your thumb off the analog stick for switching weapons, reloading, sprinting, thrusting. Board, switching grenades. With the control and mouse combination, you can s do all this at the same time, resulting in a, in a smooth and precise aiming without interruptions. Another advantage is the fast response of the mouse click. Because of the short distance, um, a mouse click is much faster than the right trigger. This means that you have an advantage with semi-automatic weapons, such as the carbine, which can shoot very fast. <laughs> Lastly, I want to give you the reason why I do not, do not play with a keyboard. The reason is that I think that the 360-degree movement of the analog stick is more important for a game like Halo than the faster response of WASD. That's because Halo has a lot of 1v1 battles going on for several seconds. And this time, your direction is given. If you have only 8 directions for movement during this time, you, go, you are on a disadvantage. And that's because Halo, in Halo you can always move at the same speed, whether you're shooting, jumping, zooming, or do other actions. And often while this 1v1 battles, and generally, you must take difficult jumps. All this requires a precise angle, which in my opinion can only be achieved with an analog stick. In my opinion, this advantage outweighs the benefit of WASD fast responses. But the fast response of WASD for movement is also extremely important. Basically, it's much faster to press WASD to change the direction of movement than move the analog stick from one side the other. So fast movement is very important when it comes to strafing and aiming. And currently uh, I have set a fast acceleration curve in my controller app. This means I only need to move my analog stick 50% to achieve 100% movement speed. The remaining 50% of the radius of the analog stick, which I don't use, I have blocked with tape to avoid unnecessary movements, unnecessary analog stick movements. Uh, 
I would like go I would like to go into that in a separate video where I describe the differences between an analog stick and WSD and show you how you can improve your analog stick for movement with tape. That's the end of the video. If you're interested in the setup I use, I have linked the devices in the description, starting from the USB port of my Xbox. That would be the XIM Apex adapter, the Elite controller, the Logitech G502 and my mousepad. You have to put XIM in your Xbox USB port and connect your controller and your mouse to the ports of the XIM. You can then use both mouse and controller at the same time. The way I use my setup, you don't need to connect the keyboard. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see each other again in the next video.